To start today's video, I want to ask you guys, how long have you been a Michigan football fan? I think I'm 30 plus years at this point. Uh, I went to a Michigan game when I was about five years old, Michigan, Ohio State in the 80s. Want to know from you guys, the first season I really remember though is the 91 season, Desmond Howard. Let me know, comment below, how long have you been a Michigan football fan? Give me the years or just give me the year that you remember becoming one. we got a great show for you coming up. It's the Michigan Football Report starting right now. As always, I am your host, James Yoder. I scaled the wall of Schembechler Hall, climbed up with my binoculars, and I have been doing some deep spying on the program, have a drone flying over practice to give you the inside scoop nobody else has on the five biggest stars, the biggest performers so far, about 11 days in to, I'm sorry, nine days in to the Michigan football fall camp, 16 days away from the opener at Minnesota. Let's start off with the guy that seems to be everyone's number one, but mine, it is Joe Milton. You saw the video I put out last week, leave Joe Milton alone, blog boys. Stop hyping him up, fans. We don't know what we're going to get from Joe Milton yet. No one's seen him make more than one reasonably strong pass to Giles Jackson last year against Rutgers in his entire Michigan career. Under 50% passer in high school. I understand that Dylan McCaffrey transferred, and maybe that's a sign that he didn't think he had a chance over the next two seasons to, to unseat Milton. I understand that Urban Meyer said he looked over at 2018 game and said, who is that big guy? He reminds me of Cam Newton in size. Urban Meyer, to my knowledge, has never seen Cam Newton play in person outside of the few snaps he took in the 2018 game as a true freshman. So let's lower expectations of Milton. Anyone coming out there thinking he's going to drop 375 like he you know, is a first-half quarterback for Mike, Mike Leach, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. A lot of you guys did it with Shea Patterson. Great career, in my opinion, a good career for, for Shea Patterson in Michigan. Certainly better than a hell of a lot of quarterbacks we've seen over the last 10, 15 years at Michigan. But everyone thought he was going to come in and win the Heisman, win a national championship. And as such, some people think he didn't fulfill his, those expectations or was a disappointment in Michigan's career, his career at Michigan. Don't do that to yourself, to Joe Milton. I don't think he's going to throw for over 200 yards against Minnesota. It's just, why would I think that until I see it on the field? So I en encourage you guys to do the same. Just take what you get. If he turns out to be a star, awesome. If he turns out to be a good first-year quarterback, don't call him a disappointment. But before we get to number four, three, two, and one, I want you guys to type Go Blue in the comments. I want to see how many Michigan fans are watching this show because I've had a lot of Minnesota and Ohio State fans infiltrating the comment section. So go down. I'm going to pin this comment right beneath the video. I'll type Go Blue. You guys type Go Blue. Why you do it, an ad's going to play really quick here from YouTube. Scroll back up. Ad should be over. Next up on our list is sophomore running back Zach Charbonnet, a guy who was your starter early in the season, got hurt, tried to play through it. Some people say they played him against Wisconsin just to spite me. I'm not going to confirm or deny that happened, but you guys have said it, not I. Lost his starting job, though. The back half of the season, it was really the Hassan Haskins show. And I think the number that skews it for a lot of people is those 11 touchdowns you see right there in the middle of the screen, Michigan freshman record of 11 touchdowns last season. Some people say, wow, that's better than Mike Carr. That's better than Tyrone Wheatley. That's better than a number of other great running backs who got significant snaps as a freshman. Well, the number skewed a little bit. Jim Harbaugh fell in love with him inside the five-yard line, just like they did with Khaled Hill a few years back, where they ain't said they're in the three, Charbonnet got the ball. But I thought it was Hassan Haskins playing the best on the stretch last season. But was Charbonnet hurt? I'm not really sure what to expect. Who's going to get the most carries? I assume each guy is going to get 10 to 15 carries the first few weeks, but you've got a wild card in there. Chris Evans. 1,600 yards in his career. Some guys have like 17, 16, 17 touchdowns in his three years, 2016, 17, 18 at Michigan. Missed the 2019 season with some academic issues. He's back as a fifth-year guy. I think he's going to get the ball out of the backfield and out of the backfield as a pass receiver. So I'll ask you guys this question on screen. You've had a minute to think about it. Now you know your answer. ZC for Zach Charbonnet, HH for Hassan Haskins, CE for Chris Evans. Go down in the comments. Let's get this debate started. 16 days left to the football season started. 
This is actually the one that I think is the most interesting. Who is going to be the leading rusher in 2020 for the Michigan Wolverines? You guys have seen this offer on the last few shows, most likely, if you watched them. Appreciate that you did. We got it extended through kickoff on October 24th. You can get hooked up with BetUS 125% deposit bonus to bet on sports. If you've been following my picks lately, you're losing a lot of money. So, hey, bet it, take the opposite side of my picks. You're going to be rich. Go to BetUS, chatsports.com slash go blue, promo code go blue. And what's this, producer? What's this? Jersey offers back through the kickoff at Minnesota. You get going. Chatsports.com slash go blue. Transfers your heads you over to BetUS. You type in that promo code go blue when you deposit. You can get a Michigan football jersey, the one they sell at MDEN, the one they sell at Nike, not one of these cheap Walmart ones, the Jordan brand. All you got to do when you get set up with BetUS to redeem is email goblue at chatsports.com. Put jersey in the subject, something like that. So we know, send us your account number. We'll confirm, get your shipping information, and get one off to you, hopefully, because if you do it quickly, before that first game against Minnesota. Number three on my list. A name that may, many of you may not even know much about, Ryan Hayes. Got a couple starts last year when Lil John Runyon missed the first couple games of the year against Middle Tennessee State, against Army. He got the start as a young player, and with, with Jalen Mayfield opting back in, you know, Stuber doesn't need to potentially switch back to tackle. So Ryan Hayes is actually going to stay at your left tackle. Jalen Mayfield prefers that right tackle position. I guess left tackles make more in the NFL, so I'm not sure why I wouldn't try and switch, but that's neither for me to decide or you. Jalen Mayfield is going to be there, and Ryan Hayes is one of the stars. I've been told he's actually outplayed Mayfield on that offensive line, been the best performer through the first nine or so days of fall camp. Now, why am I so excited about this offensive line in some ways? It's not that I'm expecting him to be the best offensive line in Michigan history or anything like that, but... Most people perceive it as a weakness coming into the season. I told you a few weeks back, it's one of the question marks for the season. But who is going to deny that Ed Warner has not been one of the best offensive line coaches in college football for the past 15 years? He's done it at four different schools, certainly did it at Ohio State, did it at Minnesota, and now will be doing it for his third year at Michigan. Four guys drafting in the draft this past, fall, this past spring, and they're all playing well. Michael Onwenu is performing phenomenally as the – you know, uh, as a tackle for the New England Patriots. So I trust Ed Warner. I think these four new starters are going to play fine. Maybe they take a game or two to get back into it, but I'm excited about this offensive line going into this season. If you guys haven't yet, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. We set a record two weeks ago. Most subscribers of the 2020 calendar year so far for this channel. Get us going. We're getting up towards 8,000 subscribers. Hit the button. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. If you ever forget, ever want to come back, that's the destination. Subscribing, it gets your alerts. It'll show you our videos at the top of your YouTube feed when you head over to YouTube. So make sure you do it today because season 16 days away, the content is just going to be churning, churning, churning along. Number two, number two on our list is Daxton Hill. We did an entire couple videos two weeks ago about Daxon Hill potentially moving positions. So I want to throw up a depth chart, show you what it would look like if Daxon Hill switched positions from safety to nickelback. Vincent Gray, we all know about, played a lot last year. DJ Turner, don't know what to expect from him. But if Daxon Hill is playing nickel, I think they're going to do it to put him on some of the speedier players on the opposing roster. Maybe a shot Bateman uh, in Minnesota in that opener. But the more Don Brown talks, the more Mike Zordich, the secondary coach, talks, and you don't hear much more about Dax Hill really making the move, I'm starting to think this might have just been some overzealous reporting by people who wanted to break news and have so-called insiders, maybe myself included. I'm not sure. But Dax Hill, will he be a corner? I don't really know. I think they're going to be flexible with him, but I would be willing to bet that when we line up against Minnesota on October 24th, you're going to see Hill playing primarily as a safety. So he's number two. Before we get to number one, I'm going to ask you guys this question. Eight games are on the schedule for the Wolverines. Let's not count the ninth game. We know it's there, but why try and predict it if you don't even know who the dang opponent is? So with eight games on the schedule now, go down in the comments, predict Michigan's record, I am on the record for a 6-2 and two finish. I think they lose the opener against Minnesota because, hey, that's just Jim Arbaugh's M.O. Why am I going to go, uh, you know, why am I going to look at something in the past? Harbaugh really hasn't done anything different and expect different results. I expect them to lose to a top 25 team on the road to Minnesota. Also, clearly expect them to lose 
on uh, December 12th to Ohio State. Going to ask you guys the question one more time we led the show with, how long have you been a Michigan fan? I'm looking in the comments right now. <laughs> Enough of you haven't answered it, so I had to bring it back up on screen. Go down, let me know. Uh, it's like the wedding things, you know. How many people have been married for five years, 10 years, 20 years? If anybody who's commenting in this video, you've been a Michigan fan for 75 years, I'm going to go down, comment, we'll verify it, we'll have you on the show sometimes, maybe. Producer in my ear can't do that. Well, we'll think about it. So go down, tell me how long have you been a Michigan football fan. Number one on our list is Aiden Hutchinson. And I almost changed this when we put this, we put this list together because of the blog boys and their absolute ridiculous headline I saw earlier this week, which I'll talk about in a second. But We'll talk about the defensive line. Getting a lot of hype. Tom, did we have Quiddy Pay in the first round in your mock draft? So Quiddy Pay in the Chat Sports mock draft this week, first round mock draft, was a first round pick. He's getting a lot of hype. Some people say his stats a little inflated or his uh, you know, combine scores of uh, what he runs, what he weighs, all that different stuff. C Carlo Kemp's been around for a while. Chris Hinton is a true sophomore, got a lot of playing time last year, but Aiden Hutchinson is the one that has been performing the best out of all Michigan football players this camp. Now, before we kind of wrap up the show, I'm not going to name the guy by name because uh, let's just give him too much credit, but there's a certain Michigan football radio host out there who is trying to stick words in the mouth of uh, parents of Michigan football players by just baiting Chris Hutchinson, Aiden's dad, saying, well, what do you think about the comparisons to your son being the next Bosa, the next Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa? And he asked it so many times, what's he going to say? No, my son is not good enough to be uh, considered a Bosa. He's just like, I, those are accurate comparisons. And you know, frankly, you know, if they were, uh, I'm not even going to say the white thing, but why are you going to compare him to a Bosa? Why? Because he has blonde hair and, and he looks like him? I don't know. But I don't think that's a fair assessment to have a Bosa uh, tag on Aiden Hutchinson. He doesn't have anywhere near that talent, nor has he produced anywhere near the level those players did at Ohio State through the first two seasons. But I'm excited to see what we get from him this season, and you should be too. He's our number one performer on the list. If you haven't subscribed to the Michigan Football Report yet, make sure to hit this button right here. Subscribe to the channel, free for the next 365 days, unless I change my mind. And if you want some more Michigan football content, I got you hit right here and right here. Watch these videos, go blue.